Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your archer, and today I'm going to show you the most important thing that you can master to get better at your paintings. I'm not even exaggerating that. Now, a lot of times when we make uh, videos for beginners, we say a lot of big things, but this really is, after all of my years uh, being on YouTube, one of the primary things that I have to give advice on when someone's like, how can I make my painting better? This is a skill that they haven't quite understood and people overlook this color mixing fact, which is tint, tone, and shade, because um, it seems really basic. It seems like it's at the beginning of everything. You feel like you can read up on it and understand it, but actually we're going to do some hands-on practical learning because when you walk away, you're going to see your paintings and color and value differently. Now, to help me bring this promise to you, Hello. Is my husband John. He's going to make sure that when I'm talking about something or demonstrating something that the camera is actually pointing at it so you can see it. Now this is a live show so we are going to do a Q&A. We're going to take those questions though. I want you to put them all in caps so the moderators can grab them. Sometimes they'll have the answer for you but we're going to take some of these questions and at the end of the show do the live Q&A. And the reason I'm doing this is so that you guys on replay can watch the basic part of the learning but you know, not have to deal with all the Q&A as you go. You can do that at the end if you want it, but if you don't, this is going to be a fairly clean class. I am very excited. We're going to put up step one, step two, step three, step four, but I'm going to tell you what those are. Those are going to be time stamped and labeled out in the description below where I hide extra things like links to the website, materials that I'm using, you know, the important stuff. There is on the website at the link a reference. It's going to be today's reference. Um, which is this little apple we're going to use for our apple study. Now, this is um, really nice to have if you can print this out or put it on a digital screen. We're also going to have it picture in picture. And this is what we're going to do in a very short 20 minute uh, value study to understand how tint, tone, and shade relate to us as painters and how being able to see those very easily. And I'm going to show you a hack workaround if you're not that great at seeing that yet to do better in our paintings. Like, because I say this to my new artists all the time. It doesn't really matter what color you use as long as you get your value correct. And mm. then that's an easy thing for me to say and an incredibly challenging thing for you to do. So I've been working on this class in my head, writing notes, taking ideas down, thinking of all the things I've ever said that have worked. And I'm just putting it together all in this one class. Let's jump right on in and go over the materials that we're using. I have the 1264 Fabriano Mixed Media Multi-Technique Pad here. It's a 9 by 12. It's 120 pound. Um, it's got a medium tooth. I just really like it because I can do watercolor in here and I can do acrylic in here and I can do pencil in here. Just whatever I'm working on. And sometimes for this type of classwork, I find it to be incredibly useful. I think I had a crook in there for a second. <laughs> Um, for keeping that and then also it can become a notebook that you can reference later. So I like that. I only have out right now red, white, and black. Now specifically this is CAD red medium and I do use real CAD pigment. That might feel expensive or overwhelming for you. So you can just use any red or really any primary color that you want. Yellow might be a little too light to see it. Um, so you might, if you're not going to use uh, blue, then you could maybe use a good deep green. But I think red's a great way to see this effect first, and it kind of ties into the apple. Titanium white and Mars black. I am going to be going through some paint. Um, and even though we are painting something today, today I don't want you to think of it as a uh, paint, like drawing skill or painting skill. It's more of a how can I see how light or dark this stuff is. How does this relate to what happens here on my canvas? So let's put up step one bum, 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 and talk initially about what we've got going on. We're going to talk about what is tint. So you'll hear this all the time with artists. I'm going to write this down on here so you know where we are. Tinting means simply that you are adding white to a color. You will hear this described all the time. We talked about it on the color wheel. I'll show that to you guys. Remember how I said over here that your tint, tone, and shade is on here? Well, where that is, is adding white. Where you see the add white, that's your tint, right? Also back here, they give you a tint, a tone, and a shade guide as well. We're going to go a little deeper than that. And if you have trouble remembering uh, what they were, remember that they put those definitions often on the wheels for you so you don't have to remember. 
So at one end of our scale, right, we've got red. This is my CAD red. That is not tinted, right? And on the other end of the scale, what do we have? We have white. That's not too bad. We can barely see that on the white paper, and that's another reason why I like Fabriano, because it's extra white. Now, you'll hear artists talk about this tinting the paint. So let's bring over a smidge of our white to the red, and we're going to add just a little bit to it. It isn't going to be as dark as it is here. It's going to be slightly tinted. I'll wipe off my brush here. If you're wondering what brush this is, this is a number eight catalyst short handle brush. I like it for this type of work. You can use any brush that you're comfortable with. I'm going to bring over a little more white paint and mix it in. Oftentimes on a tube of paint, you're going to hear tinting strength. That also refers to how much a color can impact or overpower another color. So people will say to you, dioxazine has a strong tinting strength. They don't mean you're adding white to it. They're saying dioxazine can overpower another color. So there's a couple ways that artists will conversationally use these terms that might throw a beginner totally off from their experience. I know we're doing this slowly. I want you to do this with me because this is going to be your roadmap to understanding what happens. I'm going to get a little more white into it. Let's go a little more. Sometimes I wipe off my brush to get a good vision of it. A little bit more white. So what you should be seeing is every paint that you put down should be lighter than what's next to it, right? So you should be going from the pure color to the white color. Now, sometimes you can do this exactly in 10 steps because grayscale is in 10 steps, and this does relate to the grayscale. Now, in this, and we're going to talk about this again in our color terms, this is monochromatic, not achromatic. Achromatic refers to black and white, those non-hued colors, right? Monochromatic means we're using a single color. So the painting we're going to be doing, not achromatic, it's going to be monochromatic. Just an important thing to do. And what are, what are, remember how I showed you the video about how to read a color wheel? Those words are here too. So you won't have to, it, it's like literally monochromatic. Now it doesn't tell you about achromatic on here because achromatic is a little more advanced. But on our color scheme video, we're going to go into it. So you've tinted. You're a genius. You've got that down. You are one step closer to being better at your painting. We're going to add, we're going to tone. Two. Yeah, I'm just using Posca pens. Step two, let's tone. Toning is when you add gray. Um, oftentimes you will also hear our artists, and I'll show you this, talk about toning a paint with a complementary color because that's another way to gray the paint, and I'm going to demonstrate that here as well. All right, so when we tone, I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to take a little bit of white. Black has a very strong tinting strength, even though it's not adding white to it, but that's something to think of. I'm just trying to help you guys understand that these terms can sometimes refer to two things. And that can get super overwhelming. I could have mixed this with an artist knife, but today I'm just kind of working the, the brush. So let's go back to our beginning like we had before. I rinsed out my brush. What do we have? We have our pure red. So we know where that is. I highly recommend going through and tint, toning, and shading a few of the colors in your palette just so that you feel confident in the concept because it will make the value paintings easier. So gray here, red here. I'm gonna take a little bit of my gray over to my red. And I've added some and you can see that that has toned the color. Add a little bit more gray to it. And 
and I have toned the color, adding a little bit more gray to it. So when we're trying to demonstrate a transition of colors, when we're trying to blend, when we're trying to make shades or evaluations, this skill, super important skill, and that would go all the way from red over to its pure gray. Straight line challenge that I am. <laughs> It's fine. Okay, so now you have that concept. I have tinted the color, I've added white, I have toned the color, I have added gray incrementally taking it from its pure hue, that's the pure color that it is, to this gray, right? Which is a neutral value. Right. Okay, next one we're gonna do, next one we're absolutely gonna do is we are gonna shade. So I, if you've been with me for a minute, like to use dioxazine purple to shade my red, but in the purest sense of the word, when you're shading, you are simply adding black. Now, way back in our original Acrylic April, I created a tint tone shade color chart where you can learn every mix your paint mix makes, including the tints, tones, and shades. Crazy as that is. Um, and if you want to make it, it can be a little bit of a challenge to make it, but if you want to make it, you can absolutely make it and you will not be sorry that you did. Now what's on the other end here? Well, on the other end here is black. All right, that's not, it's not a terrible, terrible transition. And so what would we be doing? I think at this point, you might be kind of aware that we're gonna take a little bit of black and mix it to the red. So it's mostly purely red with a little bit of black. Pretty easy to get, got it going the other way. So this one, I find that shading is just a little bit more challenging just to control the, the transition of it. Can be a little, a little harder, adding a little more black. Black being such a powerful, powerful color in color mixing. But you can see, even within this, there are several shades that take it from our pure red pigment over to our black pigment, right? So essentially, in painting, I'm working with these three sort of concepts. I have my highlights, my middle tones, and my shadows. Often in my highlights, I do have a range of highlights that's at least that broad. And I start out my painting somewhere in this highlight, this middle tone, and this shadow. And then at the end of my painting, you'll notice that I do these highlights, these mid-tones, and these shadows to finish it out, which is why it seems like at the end of an acrylic painting, it all kind of comes together in the last third. All right. Now, I'm going to also do a couple of things here. I'm going to show you just really quick what you need to know just as a painter that sometimes in this... We like to oversimplify and not talk about, but you will see in painter terms, I'm putting out a little phthalo green. Hmm? I'm gonna put in a little phthalo green. And I'm also gonna put out a little dioxazine purple, right? And talk about two things that I might do in my personal palette space. I will sometimes tone a color with its complement, right? So if I look at red, right? And I'm looking for its complement. Remember we talked about the wheel tells us a bunch of important information. The complement of red is green. And I can see that here if I'm having trouble because it gives me the direct line. Anywhere in there is still absolutely its complement. This is going to help us when I teach you color schemes later. So let's write down its little thing. What are we doing? We are going to Shade with complement. And then we're going to tone with complement. Tone with 
complement. Okay, and if you can, go ahead and go to the trouble of doing this work with me because you will have a much better understanding. I believe hands-on learning makes a big difference for people. So I've got my pure red and it's pure complement over here, it's green. Is this the pure definition of this? No, but I can tell you as artists, we all do this and we will say I'm toning it because we understand we're using the complement to gray it. I'm gonna take a smidge of green over to my red. And you can see I have darkened it a shade with the green, a value step. If I add a little more green into it, I have desaturated or grayed that color a little bit. We're also gonna get closer to the color brown. That's another thing our color wheel uh, teaches us is that if you mix uh, green with red you get a brown there we go so we go from there and right in this range right right in the kind of one to one range we get a fairly distinctive i'm gonna get that right here because it was a little bit biased into the green but you can see that now we get a brown in the middle Right. So that's what that's if you don't have brown on your on your palette, that is what happened to you. We're almost done with this part of it and then we get to work on our apple and I'm going to also show you with the trick to tell how light or dark something is you're going to love it. All right. So we are going to shade with the oxazine. I like to shade um cad red with the oxazine. This is a personal sherpa shade. <laughs> so you can even call that this is the Sherpa shade. I'm not saying no other artist in the universe have ever, ever shaded this way. I'm just saying shade, cad, red. At the end of all this color mixing stuff, you're going to realize what colors in the wheel will actually kind of tone and shade things. Um, as you go. Um, I've and got some great questions for you here at the end to ask. So. Oh, oh, but we got to do the right. apple. So you, we're going to do, go, we're going to, we have an apple to paint, but stay for, I'm going to answer every question. So stay to the end. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and you can even, if you want to like bookmark this and then come see if I answered your question, then I, I don't want to tell you how to spend your day. Just saying that'll be good. All right. So we're going to come here and once again, hit our red. We know that, right? This is one of my very favorite color combos. It was just a little thick. I may have to dry this so I can flip the thing over. I'm going to go over here. All right, there's Doc's Purple. Doc's Purple sometimes reads as a chromatic black in certain environments. In acrylic April this year, we're going to be using a lot of that as part of it. Now, if I were to say take a bunch of red and add a little Doc's Purple, it's still mostly red. You can see that I have deepened it or darkened it. I haven't desaturated, I've deepened or darkened it. And if I add some more purple. This also will help you make better, more confident transitions in your color. You'll see me go through the palette. You guys will often ask me, how do you go through your palette so quickly? That's how I'm going through my palette so quickly. Okay, so we have this out. I'm rinsing my water. I'm gonna dry this real quick and then I'm gonna show you, twice I'm gonna show this to you so you really leave with this understanding how to tell how the value or the grayscale of a color. You ready? I'm going to dry. So yeah, guys, thank you for joining us here. We're saving all the questions here towards the end. 
so that if you're joining this and, and going through the going through this as a course that you can stay focused on the materials here and we're going to make sure we answer as many questions as we can at the end for everybody so uh, yeah don't forget check down in the links in the description down below for more reference materials links to other parts of this course to our online store which should be opening very soon we hope um, actually it is open it just doesn't have all the good stuff that's coming soon um, it just has a few good things in it but more on that later okay hopefully these are things we're going to have in the store i haven't gotten permission from every single player but i'm hoping to carry this this is actually part of this lanyard that i like to carry um, this is a gray scale, val gray scale, scale value finder. It is a very important tool, especially if you're learning to train your eyes about how light or dark something is. So, uh, no, new step. So, this is by Pixis, P-I-X-I-S-S, -I -S, and it comes with um, a little cool screen for plein air painting and a color wheel that travels. But this is, this is the big deal. So if I take my gray and I were to put it over that white, right, you could see that it is much darker. And what you do, let's see if I can see this for myself, right? You go back and forth until you realize, oh, this is the closest, like that is closer in this space, somewhere between these two. And you can hold it right over like I can pretty much go over my doxazine purple and see that it's it's black and then I can see this transition and this transition actually it lines up really well here because I did it kind of perfect. <laughs> so how dark are these colors? They're in these ranges. How light are these colors? I get paint in it a lot. There we go. Can see it again. That worked out really well because I'm pretty good at the, the value scales of it. Do you see how then the hue shows you how light or dark it is and i'm always saying to you doesn't matter what colors you use if you get this correct that's exactly what i mean can you guys see that i hope that's blowing your mind john can you get that in them in on that so they can really see it I yeah so that's what's happening that's how you're using this tool um you know, and I just happen to have a pretty good handle. You can clean this with uh, rubbing alcohol if you get acrylic paint on it because it's, uh, it's really coated. So that's one way of thinking of using that. Another way you could use that is how light is the highlight on my apple? How dark? What value am I trying to find? Right? So if I put this here, where's my values? And I'm trying to get the correct value through the correct hole. So like the darkest shadow is really here. It's not here. And you can see that this is visibly darker than this gray, but these are pretty lined up. So if I'm really trying to figure out how light or dark something is, I'm gonna come down to the shadow. I'll let you get down there and then I'll meet you. All right? You really have to be like, almost here and you're not even this the darkest part of this isn't quite a match it's closer but it's still really here see how it's almost like this vanishes right where you're like looking for like middle grays you're like where does this where does this match you're looking for when it almost feels like there isn't a big difference between the two like you're like oh that's a little darker oh, that's a little closer and so if you're like how light or dark is it so tint tone shade, we're going to go back over this. I'm going to take a sip of my drink and I will, I think, put up my apple in a digital thing as a reference. You guys grab your apple printout because we're going to do it. Don't worry about being able to draw or not because it's really just a ball. We're just shading a ball. I was going to have a shaded ball and then I was like, that's so boring. Why are we going to shade a ball? We can shade an apple and then we're going to have a thing, okay? And then we'll be so glad that we had that thing. And that'll be the, we'll do a, a new step here in just a moment. Yeah, a new step, just a moment. I just got to grab my apple from John, as I do. <laughs> I do that sometimes. I'll be like on the fly grabbing something from John in, in, the, in the references, and I'll just import it in. There we go. 
there you are and that just gives it to me on my iPad because I like to have it on my iPad because this is really big and takes up too much space but I can see it fairly well here okay but you print out yours or have it digitally so you should have this already hopefully some of you guys are going you know I kind of think I get a little bit of this now I don't want this to stick to anything so I'm gonna go ahead and tear off this sheet you guys can just leave it in your pads so that you have a finished workbook um, I just throw mine in a portfolio if I need it but probably I just photograph it and it becomes part of a mini book or book oh and we have some cool book news at the end of the show yeah, yeah we do okay so here we are step seven now I am gonna kind of I don't know give myself a small sketch just to know I don't want to do this so big that we're at this like all day right so your basic apple is really sort of a round shape that comes kind of more pointed at the bottom, isn't it? That basic apple shape. And then we know that we've got a little arc there and a stem. I don't have to be that excited about how I sketch it out because again, it's a value study. And we know that we have a shadow that's gonna be coming out here and that means our light source is here. So our light source is coming here. That's our light source. We're gonna be able to see this as we start painting this. I am going to now actually bother to take my artist knife. I do recommend getting at least an artist knife in your world just so that you have, you know, a version of it. And I'm gonna use this and create a gray so that I have a little bit of gray worked up I may have to put out some more red we'll see how it goes but gray is the one I have to mix up enough of you know so I'm not having to do it with the brush every time I'm gonna put out a little more red just so I'm not fighting for the red I think I have plenty of white and black now a lot of times I will do an underpainting and a painting and then paint these values up and down on it right all right, I threw that too far away for me and I want to show it again. I'm going to do a funny thing. Woo! Because I'm mobile. All right, so here we are. We're going to paint the apple in our tints, our tones, and our shades. And I will reference that again a couple of times. So where's our, where's our lightest spot, right? We know that that's kind of got a tint there. And then we've got a lot of kind of mid grays happening around here. So I would in that, well, I would tone that, wouldn't I? I'm gonna not try to be super precious with it. Got a little bit coming here. I did pick the apple really honestly, guys, because I felt like if it was red and it had kind of a bit of a red apple that you all would enjoy that a bit, a little bit. I'll put my little stem back in a second. So what I'm doing is I am using my reference to see the values, the first three values, like where is it dark? Where is it light? I might come in here and take a little bit of black and red Let's come back here. And we're going to shade that with a little bit. We're going to shade it. We're not necessarily worrying about being down to our pure purest deepest color. And I'm just trying to get the planes of the apple. This is a this is a thing that they ask you to do a lot in art schools. They give you little still lifes and they light them and then you gotta paint them using your tint and tones and shades. I'm gonna come here into my stem and say, well, there's definitely a little shadow here. Shade some here. 
and then I'm going to get into a tint. Right, that's coming on the front of the apple because the apple is lighter on the front. Do this with me. You're not trying to paint a hyper realistic apple, my friends. You're just trying to get the value. Oh, it's mowing day. Of course it is. <laughs> of our apple so that we start to see the planes of the surface and how they apply. They'll just be passing by for a moment, though. Yeah, they will. I can go ahead and sort of square out shape this. Because I don't need it to be perfect. And then here we have kind of a nice little transition of a shadow coming out. So I'm going to mix a little gray into my red. In this, you're going to learn that shadows have quite a lot of values. Let's tint that out a bit. Shade that a bit. Just painting in its value. Little red, little black. And I know I want to come in with like a bit of a shade here because it really kind of comes off the apple fairly sudden on its shadow. Right. So what I'm thinking about is the steps of the shadow coming out, aren't I? How it goes from its very darkest space right under the apple. Come up with like a middle range. And we know we've got some coming up here. Right? That's a nice, that's very nice value. I know I had a little bit here that I liked very much. Like that there. And then here, I know it's like a little darker in the stem. It comes over. Maybe not as much over here, so we're just getting that value in the stem. Maybe take a little bit of the black over to the red. Not the darkest value, not as dark as what's here. Grab my gray. Because what's interesting is next to this shadow here, there's sort of not as dark of a tone going on. So we've got to tone it. You see how this is helping you see these values? Right, and I'm like, okay, that's too stark. So instead of blending to create the value transitions, what am I doing? I'm using the tint, the tone, the shade, the grayscale of it to create the planes, to create the shape and value. Like 
right? I'm using tinting and just adding white to the red here. It's not the lightest that we have, but we know that it's lighter than what's coming around the back side of the apple. I'm adding more white to it. Again, creating a lighter value at the forward of the apple. And then maybe I create a very light tint right there. And I see it sort of coming down here. There we go. That's a bit lighter, isn't it? come back into the shading of it. So I'm learning how to see the light and the shadow. I put a little stem here. Doesn't have to be like super perfect by any means. Now back here we see sort of a much lighter, don't we? Value coming off and I'm gonna tint this with my red and grandma tinted. But since there's some black on there, it's really almost toning. A lighter backside coming up and then even lighter. Just kind of painting that there, trying to see that little version of that. You know, maybe coming up the stem, a little red, a little white. I know there's a nice little shadow to the outside of the stem, right? Wow, it's like they decided to be right here where I'm working today. <laughs> well, luckily, it's, it's, I don't think it's as bad. Uh, <laughs> Is it, it for I, me? Yeah, I think it's for they're, you. They're having an easier time of it? I think so. That, that's good. They need an easier time of it. I'm going to take a little bit of my gray and red together. And I'll wipe that off and I'm going to get a little bit of my white and red. Kind of a lighter value. Can bring that down to sort of imply shape. little bit along that little edge there on that apple opening. I'm not trying to a little bit of a shade here. Got to find the value. One of the things, too, is you paint on paper, you'll notice that um, as you work, the paper takes the paint a little bit better, so you're not struggling as hard. So we're creating that kind of mid-change little value there.
Definitely like that right there. And I still love this shadow right here. To me, is it's wonderful as the highlight. Just stepping out the little shadow coming away from the little apple. And I think I'm going to put my last thing in because, it's again, it's a short study. We're not supposed to work on it all day. So we're just seeing how light impacts this object. So let's step back from that and do we have an apple object? We have an apple object that we did with tint and tone and shade. To paint anything, you've got to be able to see that your painting, that your object is light, it's grays, it's shadows, what values those are, where they're sitting on the gray scale, that's what this is about, is understanding this. Tinting and toning and shading with white, tinting, white, toning, gray, shade is black, is one way artists change the value of their painting. The other ways they might do it is they might lighten the value with a color like I might add yellow to red to lighten it or yellow to green to lighten it that way I'm not changing the hue right because if I had white to red I've really made it pink but if I add yellow and I'm taking it more into the oranges another thing that you can do if you take a if you take a color too far out of its range you can come in like if I added uh, green to orange, uh, red, I could come back with orange to again lighten it. So there's a myriad of ways of which we're going to continue each time we get together to go a little deeper in. We're going to introduce a concept and then we're going to go a little deeper in it. We're going to introduce a concept and we're going to go a little deeper in it. We might cover a couple concepts a couple of times because if you do all these classes when you come into Acrylic April this year, you're going to be like, Oh, I'm at speed. I get it. All of you are going to come out of it going, my color mixing got easier for me. Now, that is, that is tint, tone, and shading. Let's do the Q&A portion of, the, of our day. Okay. I so have so many answers. What we'll do is we're going to go ahead and throw up a step eight. Okay, step because eight. Because this is the Q&A Q and a step. Now, this is really good because I may have to make you small again for this next question. Okay. So when you were proportioning out paint mm -hmm. and you were talking about um amounts like one to one one to two two to one like that kind of mm -hmm. stuff some folks were talking about in in chat that they found it easier with a palette knife sometime to measure that out it is easier with can, a palette can knife. you show that uh measuring with a brush or with a palette knife. the palette knife thing okay so if i were to say i want one part white well, then I can go and get pretty much exactly that same part red. And that's because you can see the amount of it on the end of the, yeah. the tip. And, and then you can, you that way you know you're how, much, how much you're getting. And that's sometimes easier than with a brush. And as you can see with CAD red, that's just, uh, well, that's really kind of a, I like it as a coral. Ah, yes. Makes a nice coral. And I could add another part of white to that. And you can get an easier to achieve, just shade lighter. Mm -hmm. Just easier to do. There's some great questions here also about okay. uh, di about diox. Yes, um, dioxazine does, purple. It's the bomb. Does the dioxazine purple desaturate the cad red? See, that's what I love about it. It does not that much it does a little and we can look at it it does a little but not compared to its complement green I don't really get a brown so when I put in a true complement I'm going to get a brown in there 
but when I put in the diox because the diox is so biased red that's remember when I made uh, red with pr a primary color with secondary colors I made red with orange and 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 uh, purple mm. that's what that is is that there's so much red in the diox um, compared to the green which has the none red um, that you're going to be here now like we're going to go over when we get into our the uh, primary colors and understand primary colors and and color schemes i'm going to show you why in this really simple exercise why you're not getting bright colors and how to find hidden biases within mm. your paint but yes there is blue here another great one right but since red and in blue it's the hidden yellow in this that even would gray it at all and it's such a minor thing against the purple because the tinting strength is so high i find it's a much greater saturation than when i get into the greens oops okay so i'm gonna stick with it there's, there's another there was another one up here let me go back to it okay. can you shade any color with diox i mean in the same way that you can shade any color with blue or brown, um, if you have a color that has an intrinsically dark value. So if your color, right, and there's a lot of colors that are intrinsically here on the color scale, on the gray scale, and you can really see those when they are. Look, we did such a good job there are um on this part of the grade scale that's going to be able to deepen or darken any color but interestingly like and and that so you couldn't say it's like it's purple what you would say is if the color has a very deep dark value like a lizard crimson is here uh you know phthalo blue is in here uh bird sienna is in here so there are a lot of colors that are in this natural pigmented range um, there's a video, if you haven't watched the full uh, Acrylic April playlist of the Tintone Shade color charts and all of those preliminary introductions to those concepts, we I actually show you guys uh, in grayscale how light or dark the paint is. And that's something you can do. You could swatch out like this your paint, take a photograph with your phone, desaturate the color, get your little color finder out and be like, oh see how light or dark it is and if it's dark you can absolutely shade or deepen a color with it that's how a lot of artists you'll hear a lot of people say i never paint with black never never <laughs> ever ever and uh i mean that's cool <laughs> they want to yeah. do that mm -hmm. but what what they're what they're doing is they're just using other colors to get the the dark value you can see this is a really dark value right but i i could get that with purple the purple and the black value here, you can see it even on the palette, or they're just the same. How dark it is. Different hue, that's the color that they are, but their value, how light or dark it is, about the same. Oh, I love these. These are great. Are you guys loving these courses? I hope so. I hope everybody's loving these because they're going to make okay. a big difference. So I, let's see here. Another one that we we'll see here. Uh, is this the same if we start with underpainting such as burnt umber or orange? Yeah. Um, this was a really good one. Could you paint without gray? Yeah. Yeah, you could absolutely paint it without gray. I could have done the apple with just black and red, and I could have done the apple with just white and red, but we were kind of trying to pull the tint tone and shade all together as a concept. In a painting, I don't mix gray per se, um, but I absolutely tone my paint all the time. And you'll hear me talking about it where I'm like, let's tone that red with some ultramarine blue. And, and that can be confusing if you look up the terms tint, tone, and shade, and it says add white, add gray, add black, period. That's correct. But in the practice of our art studios, when I'm going through what skill am I using, and you'll hear this with a lot of other artists out there when they're describing what they're doing, when they're saying I'm graying a color, or I'm desaturating a color, they're saying that I'm toning it. They'll say I'm toning it. They're just saying they're graying and desaturating. When they say I'm shading it, they're saying I'm darkening it. When they say I'm tinting it, they can say I, they're either saying I'm lightening it or I am altering its color in a small amount. Tinting strength talks about the amount of color. Like, so if you imagine two colors are in a battle, okay? So let's say I put dioxazine purple, psh, fight. And I put cad yellow, psh, fight. Right. 
his tinting strength is much stronger than Cad Yellow's tinting strength, which means knockout. <laughs> so one hit, boom, down, glass jaw, says Cad Yellow to Doc's purple. Can't compete. <laughs> you know, so um, that's that's really what they're talking about in tinting strength. It's like how, how powerful it is. Um, it, it takes a lot of white to change Cad Red. But it takes very little cad red to change white. So a lot of times you'll, if you think of it as like a battle match, that's what's happening. I don't know if that visualization helped anybody, but that's kind of essentially what's going on. No, that's great. Now, one of the other ones that was good in here is, uh, can you demonstrate uh, the, how do you darken white? And I'm going to come over here. No, we'll just do it with pure black. Now, who has the strong tinting strength? It's the black. So how, how gently do I need to come over? pretty gently to get one shade darker. I don't know if John can catch this as I go across and another shade darker. Whenever you are deepening white, a lot of times I like to deepen white with blue. Believe it or not, black is kind of a blue, which is why we can make green with yellow. But whenever you're uh trying to deepen white you can do it with uh, blue pretty easily i needed a little more there there you go so you can get several shades across. Um, I Any color that you add to white where you take it out of its pure chroma, its pure pigment, its pure, pure sense, right? In titanium white. If I add a brown to it, if I add blue to it, if I add any color to it, I will have intrinsically darkened it because it's the lightest value that I have. It's the lightest in the whole color scale is the white. So adding any color to it does intrinsically darken it. But in the process of it, practicality, what I would say is go slowly, darken your white slowly because it, it tints, it, it, it gets that color, it gets impacted and, and made impure really, really quickly. So it's better to add a little bit and find your moment, your shade. Remember, you've got your handy dandy wet tool this tool and this tool doesn't even start with white and then where else does this tool exist remember I told you this this one actually does start with white oh it's here so if I needed to see what value these paints were I would have a nice visual cue wouldn't I on the outside and it tells you this is value 10 and this is value 1 so it tells you, so if somebody ever said use a value of, so a lot of artists, because they go to traditional art school, will sit there and say, um, deep into a value of five. And you're like, what is five? It's five is right here. <laughs> just if you're ever anywhere, if you take a, just a random art class, it's good to have at least the pocket version of this with you, just in case somebody says something crazy like, deep into a value of five you'll be like okay i see it there understand what you mean if you don't know what i'm talking about go back and watch the just 10 minute video how to read a color wheel it's why we introduced that to you yeah. eventually i'll tell you what my favorite color wheels on the market are because i own them all <laughs> everyone is it everyone is, now, is it helpful to use Payne's gray yes yeah some people will use Payne's gray in place of mars black um Payne's gray is a bluer value it, it isn't a true black but chromatically it is when i say chromatically it's black 
and we're going to say to the eye to the scale of value it's black but it doesn't necessarily have black pigment in it right so alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue make a chromatic black or gray because you can just keep adding white to it you know um burnt sienna and ultramarine they can go pretty dark but they pretty stay they stay pretty gray um so you really got to get something deeper in there to get that d saying help with values using yellow please help with values using yellow so with yellow understand that yellow starts let's look at where yellow starts we're going to evaluate where yellow this is very good i'm loving that we're asking these questions so let's start with some cad yellow not the lightest yellow that i have the lemon yellow is the lightest yellow that i have and if you're doing acrylic april um, that we're changing the tight knit yellow over to the lemon yellow hansa this year for a whole bunch of reasons that are just crazy and dramatic to get into but it's any lemon yellow light yellow cad yellow light hansa yellow light light yellow right which is i'll, I'll even show you actually we can even I'll, I'll even show it to you here because this is actually even a shade lighter but yellow starts quite light yellow begins and we'll look at our grayscale real fast you know to kind of see it can you even see the two value changes there yeah. those are significantly different they're not just different in hue in that the cad yellow has a bit of a red bias to it and that the lemon yellow has a bit of a green bias to it and between these two you get very different oranges and greens this is part of the six colors that every painter absolutely needs to have but when I go to try and even start on these, look, look how, look, man, it's like here to even start. And this is too light even for this grayscale. So I almost have to come over into my wheel and be like, where are they? Yellow is at values eight and nine. They're at a very light value set may maybe you could argue nine and yeah it's it's eight and nine very light value set and then if i'm adding white to it you know that's a that's practically the paper and then if i add white to the lemon yellow Hansa. Now, a lot of artists will use compliments. Uh, we'll come to the bottom. Can we come to the bottom of the thing? And I'll show you what I mean there. So let's say I've got yellow over here and I'll put my docks purple over here. Boy, it does not take a lot of docks to make this journey, so. Don't worry that I don't have enough left, right? There we go. So I have that. And outside of where I would take white to it to lighten it, which you can see is, was up there was pretty effective. If I take a little bit of, oh my gosh, just any amount of Doc's purple. It's darker so fast. And also grays, desaturates. Notice that I'm just working the palette. I'm just grabbing a little bit at a shot. And then from here I can be like, no, you need to be a little bit darker, but you're there. So see that gray scale of yellow? A lot of artists will use purple. Violet's also another nice option to do it, or you can mix up a good ultramarine quinacridone magenta violet and, and, and deepen it so it's not such a contrast. And then you might lighten, really white's all you've got to lighten. So 
those are kind of your ranges. Some artists like to use browns where they want to keep it in the yellow. And some artists like to use reds to darken it. But again, much like white, any color that you add to it is going to tint it out. I hope that helped. Good explanation for you. And I hope you do, you're doing these exercises with me as I go. Because your paint may be pigmented a slightly different way than mine. Um, that's just true. That's just a oh, true fact for paints. Jane was asking for portraits. Should we do color studies like these for tint, tone, and shade? Yeah. In a portrait, uh, a lot of really good portrait artists will do a, a tonal study underneath the painting. It's not maybe a true uh, grisaille. Grisaille is when you do a value study and then do glazes of oils underneath it. But when you look at the the like the artists that are like I rock portraits, all of them have in common an incredibly strong sense of value. Um, and you can do those studies in a digital sense. I can do a study um, in my digital iPad with you know those tools. You could do a pencil study to get the values. Um, you could take you know a kind of uh, brown and white and black and create that value study It'd be kind of more of a, a, a monochromatic study um, you could do an achromatic study where you just do it black and white underneath so there's a lot of options there but what's really important is just seeing you know like a lot of people miss that there's a reflection up underneath the nose or um, how little of the eye actually shows i i tend to be a big eye painter so I, I distort that, but in reality, if you're painting what is, it's very little, it's a lot of shadows, and there's, there's very little white, you know, on the, in, in the teeth and in the eye. And then, um, you know, depending on your, the person that you're sitting, skin tone has a wide range of value as well that you've got to really handle. So a value study can help you have a much better result in your final painting in every way. It's, it's worth it. Um, I highly recommend it. Doing studies before you do something serious never hurts you. This kind of work makes you a better painter. Playing makes you a better painter. Messing around with your color. I know it's hard when you have pure cadmium to do this because you're like, oh, it's so expensive. But you're not going to understand your paint until you play with it, until you do these exercises with it, until you're like, oh, I see how you are. It's you just it's like a marriage. You just got to get familiar. You got to be you got to be together for a minute so you can answer each other's like questions. Like John's favorite color is ultramarine. I know that because I've been married a minute to him. Yep, I like that one. And he knows mine. But I like a lot of new ones now. He does like a lot of new ones now, but he just loves him. So Sunburst much orange has he come. He does up. love sunburst orange, and, but I knew that. And I also like the the, the orange is it orange, orange the yellows. You like the uh, mustard yellow. Mustard yellows and the greens. Basically, it's the, it's the try five mid-century modern atomic yeah, just, age oh, yeah. colors. Easy, easy, easy. It's, it's just, it, that's his palette. <laughs> it's like, likes him some lots avocado of, green. Lots of people are saying thank you so much for this, and um, the how you know this is applying to the acrylic April. Um, Oh, and actually, uh, is uh, someone was just asking here, is is Lemon Yellow Hansa for Acrylic April? Ah. Lemon Yellow Hansa is for Acrylic April and will be in my palette. I'm taking the Tight Knit Yellow out for a period of time. Don't get rid of yours. If you have it, it's a fantastic color. It's a unique color. There's no other pigment on the planet like it. Um, but it is globally incredibly challenging to get. And... Um, it just, it just makes so many problems. Whereas lemon yellow, Hansa yellow light, everybody's, where did I put it? I just had it, right? So this, it, they, this, they call it lemon yellow Hansa, but really it's, it, it is a PY3, but what it is, is it's the yellow biased, it's the green biased of it. So anything that says lemon yellow or yellow light will work for acrylic April. Cad yellow light, cad yellow lemon, Hansa yellow lemon, lemon yellow Hansa. They'll put it in there. But if it's got some lemon in it, uh, uh, there's another one, um, the new weird golden yellow in the light. It, it works too. The beds, blah, 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 blah. What is it? Ben, I can never remember how to say it. 
It's their new yellows. They made a new mm, yellow yes. that's as vibrant a as cadmium. One. Huh? A new one. Yeah, it's the new one, but the yellow light. What you're looking for is a yellow listed under light because in a yellow listed under medium or mid strength. And yep. as you can see between these two, they're very different yellows. This yellow gives me all the oranges. This yellow gives me all the greens. I can get almost into neon refractions with these practically to my eye because of their nature. So when we go over the six colors every painter needs to know, I'm going to cover it. I, I have not lost my love for titanate yellow. And you could, you could just keep using your titanate yellow. You'll just get some kind of groovier mixes with, with you know, your true titanate. Yep. Nobody's ever sorry that they got it. It's kind of like uh, Indian yellow. Nobody's ever sorry that they got it. It's good so yellow. D, D was asking, is it is it good in theory, in practice, so mm -hmm. to speak, to try to use all across the tone range, like 1 to 10? Or, uh, does that make Not sense? always necessary. Not all. Um, so some, some paintings will actually specifically be in the half range they will they will go um, um, into the value one through value six and they specifically do that or they'll do value one through value five and then they'll make some focal point in this high value to create drama so not necessarily there are especially in abstract there's a lot of paintings that will arc into one range of them to give an emotional space what I would say is that the important thing for you is to recognize in your reference um, that you have a range of lights to darks. If you're having a terrible time seeing it, take the saturation out of the reference photo. In other words, desaturate it on your phone, make it black and white, and then, um, then try to use a tool like your color wheel to match it up. Or if you get the Prixis one, Pixis, then it will help you find it as well. Any of these that have a whole opening, and honestly, you can paint cardstock with your little grayscales and take a whole punch, which is what I did before I bought the fancy ones. Just, just so you know. Not that this is not super duper awesome because it comes on a little lanyard, and the lanyard has inch measurements, and it also has a a color wheel on it and it has a viewfinder for planar painting and it's just very travel oriented it's very on the go and it's groovy it's very like super groovy you can make me big again it's groovy groovy but you know um you can make your own just by taking bristol or cardstock or anything painting out your scales just like that and then hole punching it i think we could do this all day but i got a couple yeah. more good questions make me big make you big a couple more questions before we before you run out of here just real quick um one, uh, so who was saying up here earlier that they had heard a rumor, something along the lines that uh, white was none of the colors and black was all of the, uh, the colors, but they didn't understand what that meant. Well, that's really awesome when you're talking about spectral light or light that travels through space in a light wave. That's Newtonian light theory. And we do think about Newtonian light theory a little bit because he's the one that noticed that if you shine light through it, it spectrums out to a rainbow. And in a weird way, it informed our color wheel. Um, but the truth is like CMYK, uh, which is cyan, uh, magenta, and yellow, and black, that's how your printer cartridge works. And your eyes use red, blue, and green, as does your TV. When you combine all colors, all the spectrum of light together, you get white light. Um, and if, if you uh, uh, remove it, then you get black, like in space. Um, but in pigment, what that is, is that's the light waves that are bouncing into the color and coming back at your eye and your eye is seeing what is not absorbed. So totally different. This is really blue. And there's a really good Veritas Vsauce where they prove on, on it that it's not. It's, it's really interesting for that. But because in, in color, we're talking about two things. We're talking about additive color and subtractive color. And we live in subtractive color land. Yeah. So we're seeing light bounce and it's why the sky is blue and the sea is blue and the roses are red and all those things are that. Um, but in light, it's a totally different game. 
and and oftentimes those two fields of study get mixed up. Mm -hmm. I, I've even seen it on the Wikipedia page where they're 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 talking about they're talking about it in color theory, but what they're really talking about is light. And I'm like, mm, somebody's gonna need to come correct that. Which is why you don't use Wikipedia's totally and completely always trusted source. But guess what? Hmm. I think I have a Wikipedia page coming soon. I do believe if uh, what we got from the questionnaires of saying to validate information is correct, we might. Yeah. And I have so, some uh, articles written about me that are that have come out and are coming out that I will share with you guys. Oh, and yeah, I got a publisher right. for the books. So <laughs> there's, a, there's there's a few things. There's a store opening. So, there's some yeah, shows the store's happening. opening. The books are happening. I got we a publisher events. for the book, and they are actually taking everything we've written for Acrylic April. And I think those all the Acrylic gonna, April books are being done. They're going to be released now. That's going to change how the mini books are on the website because there's rules around it and. Um, what will happen is there'll be some free version that you can get, but it may not be on the website and you'll be redirected there. Yeah. And then there'll be a print copy that you can buy. And this year we'll have a book and I've never worked with them before and they say it's fast and they, and I certainly have talked about the book in Acrylic April like it's happened. So I hope I'm not a liar. But it is it is being published and that's been taken care of and the stuff is being sent over and um, they seem to think we're great. And and they're and they're and they're a direct one, so it's fast. And it won't be me shipping. It'll probably uh it'll broker off of Amazon and maybe what's the other some other um other bookstores places that you'll be able to get it. So all four of the books will be available, including this year's. And I hope you'll get all four, because that would really help. But we're we'll try to make the digital version free if they give us that that is an option. We're going to take that. That doesn't affect necessarily all mini books forever. And unless there's a way to do it free, it won't affect yeah, we all won't, mini books we're forever. We're going to continue to look that out. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. This is a good last I question. I that's exciting. I love how I tell you guys the most exciting stuff at the end and I don't make an announcement video like any decent YouTuber would. Any, so Ellen asks, asks a really good closing question, I think, okay. for us, especially given our time and stuff. Um, unless you want to. No, Keep we're it. good. Okay, we're okay. good. This is a good time to wrap up. Um, I don't want to exhaust you guys, and I want you guys to paint your apple. Ellen wants to know, how do we get ready for Acrylic April? So I will be releasing um, in the first week of March the color list and the materials list. I will probably release the entire calendar early this year. I usually don't release it till right up to the, to the minute, but I'm going to release it early this year because here's why. I want you guys to be able to take the emotional journey because some of you are going to be like, Yay! And some of you are going to be like, say what? That's not cool. And so what I want you to do is be like, do you trust me? Do you love me? Do it anyways. Because much like this, this course leading up to Acrylic April and Acrylic April is going to leave you with some painting skills y'all have been struggling with and have really expressed that you wanted to learn and you guys keep asking me about realism and I don't know how to break it to everybody until a certain number of skills are learned. We can't really do it. Mm -hmm. So much stuff needs to be known and understood. So I'm going to, here's, here's my thinking on it. I'm taking you through the color mixing and there'll be some technique, there'll be a technique video and you don't miss any of them. And then on acrylic April, don't miss any of them, even the ones you don't like, because you know how like sometimes I sneak a skill on you in a backwards way where like if I come at you like we're going to draw people then you're like ah people but if I sneak it into you in a backwards way you're like did I just did I just do that and you're also surprised with yourself. So sometimes I try to come at you guys from a direction where you're not already kind of walled off or how already have built a system of disbelief. Or I come at you with something that you already have so much disbelief about that you just go into it expecting nothing. And then you're like, did I just learn everything about water? Mm -hmm. So it just depends on, uh, on that. So please trust me on this year. Um, I certainly have put the work in. <laughs> and we're going to keep coming at you with these courses. These courses are all going to be put into a school format where they're sequential. And you'll even be able to get a certificate and everything if you want to at the end. And you'll be able to go back into them. So don't worry if you, if you want all that. But your homework from this is paint an apple. 
I, I don't mind if you paint a pear, but um, <laughs> paint your apple and do your value studies. Do, the, do this work because this work will help you when I come at you with color schemes because we're going to do about a year's worth of color schemes in a video. Um, so you understand what they are and that's going to change a lot of stuff for you. We're like, well, how, how do I know what colors to pick? I'm going to show you how you pick colors and we're going to go back to that wheel again. I'm going to show you how the wheel hit all that magic information for you. And then, um, that's going to be really, really good. And then we're going to do the six colors that you need to know. And then we're going to really like, we're going to mix all the greens and then we're going to mix all the, and then you're going to be so sick of it. By the time we get to, to this April, you're going to be like, even though. It's an unusual topic this year. Hopefully the, hopefully the patrons are here saying it's good, it's good, it's good. And you guys are, you guys chat me up because they get to see it early. They get to do videos and name things early and see it early. Um, and also tell me if a video needs to be dropped or kept. Um, cause sometimes they'll be like, don't, don't do this one. Or they'll be like, do it. Cause I'll be like, I hate it. And they'll be like, no, do it. So they're there and hopefully they'll talk me up and say, yeah, it's good. You should definitely do it. But that's what I've got going on in publishing and articles and all kinds of things in the store is we're just waiting for somebody to come back on vacation and say that it's live. And then also I've got to go to the art materials show uh, April 1st through the 4th and get, get my tube ringer and my color wheel and my Derwent and get Faber and Castell to realize that they need to be in the store and I don't know, go make relationships. <laughs> so I have all the stuff because I don't yeah. want to get... Oh, and I got some new stuff from the, uh, you know, the ultimate masking people that I'm super in love with, the ones that do the only liquid masking agent that I like. Yes. They sent me some stuff, like a lot of stuff. Probably too much stuff. I think they sent me too much stuff. But that's okay because I'll probably use it all up. And it's amazing. And I am testing that right now. And that will be some goofy, weird side quest <laughs> that we have. <laughs> Because it's super cool. And I think you guys will be excited about it. So hopefully this is great. Um, I'll see you Tuesday. I'll see you Tuesday. And you'll be glad that I see you Tuesday. You'll love it. All right. Guys, be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I'll see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.